Hello, I'm Charling and this is the Collider 2. And what is the Collider 2, you might ask? And full disclosure, I didn't play Collider 1. And in fact, I hadn't actually heard about Collider 2, but the developers reached out to me recently and asked me if I was interested in reviewing their game. Now, after doing some research, it seemed like a game that I'd probably enjoy. And so I went ahead and asked them for a review code so that I could bring you guys my impressions of this particular game. So the Collider 2 is a fast-paced, reflex-based galactic speeder game where you fly through what essentially are obstacle courses, avoiding a variety of different obstacles and traps and beams and gates closing and all that kind of thing in order to get from point A to point B in a nutshell. Now, when loading the game for the first time, I noticed it was made in the Unreal 4 engine, which was quite a surprise because when getting into the graphic settings outside of resolution, there were none to speak of at all. Now, I do know that this game is VR compatible. I don't have any VR devices myself, but I'd have to guess that they chose to do this because of performance. They wanted sort of a standardized performance across all configurations, since VR requires the game to maintain quite a high frame rate in order to be a good experience. But nonetheless, this is still surprising because there will certainly be some people who may need to turn details down in order to maintain a 90 plus frame rate in order to have a good VR experience. And I don't think that because a game is considered to be an indie game that it is a good excuse not to include at least some graphical settings. Audio wise, the game is fine, but there seems to be only one music track that loops over and over. And although it's not bad in itself, it is going to get repetitive eventually. I think I would have liked to have seen more variety with regard to the music. But of course you can always play your own music in the background with this kind of game. So let's talk about the gameplay. It's fun. I won't deny that. It's enjoyable and kind of addictive as well. There are a variety of different modes in the game. So you're essentially racing against the clock or you have to collect X amount of items or you have to shoot X amount of things. And of course it's a score attack game as well and there are leaderboards so you are going to be trying to beat your time or trying to beat your score with each successive run. So the game supports mouse, gamepad and obviously VR controls. I don't exactly know how the VR controls work since I don't have a VR headset myself. So perhaps one of you who does have a VR headset and has the game can let me know in the comment section below. So outside of moving your ship around the screen with your analog stick or your mouse, You'll also move your ship around the screen to shoot items that need to be shot. Since shooting happens automatically, you basically just have to move your crosshair over the item that you want to shoot. For more interactive controls, you've got boost, which as the name suggests, you speed up your ship so you can go faster. But boost can't be used indefinitely. You can use it until the bar fills up. If you use it after that, the ship overheats and it's going to explode. So, you know, there's that. You also have a shield, which basically allows you to crash into an object once, after which it has to recharge. But if you crash into something while the shield is still recharging, then it's game over, you're going to have to restart the map. And that's pretty much for the interactive controls. I'm a little bit disappointed. I think that it would have been nice to have an ability to flip your ship vertically for those vertical gaps that appear in some of the stages so that you don't clip on your wings and things like that it seems like it would have been something that fitted quite well into this kind of game. But perhaps that's just my personal opinion. So as you speed through the courses in the game, there's coins to collect as well as power-ups. These coins add to your coin amount and coins are basically used to buy new ships, upgrade them and also upgrade the duration of the various power-ups you collect in the game itself, along with some various color conf configurations for the different ships. Coins are also rewarded for finishing maps, so of course the more stars you get on each map, the more coins you get as a reward, and you also get coins for leveling up. The power-ups come in four different flavors, so there's cooling power-ups which allow you to boost indefinitely for a short period of time, there are armor pickups which allow you to fly through objects for a short amount of time, there's a magnetic pickup which basically draws the coins toward you so you don't actually have to fly over the coins themselves to collect them. And there's a score multiplier uh, power-up as well. But from what I can tell, these power-ups seem to be random. Well, at least in the time, in the levels that I've played so far. And, you know, I, I do find this to be a little bit strange because in a game that's so time attack slash score attack based, if you are lucky enough to get a good power-up that benefits the level you're on, it's going to aid you greatly. If you don't, well, you know, of course, you're not going to get such a good time. And I think I would have liked to have seen it be a set power-up so it's the same every time you play 
kind of like Trackmania. That way you could plan your route and you could sort of fine tune your time each time you play through the stage rather than having to rely on that element of randomness in order to get the best time for each stage. So content wise there are a large amount of stages in the game, 54 in total, that increase in difficulty and each stage awards three stars as I mentioned before depending on how fast or how well you do the stage. There are six different ships that you can purchase that can all be upgraded with the more expensive ones allowing more upgrades in boost and shield durations and that kind of thing. And then of course there's endless survival mode where you race through a stage and it gets harder and faster the longer you last. And of course with any game there's online leaderboard for those of you who are very competitive. However I have come across some issues that I think need mentioning beside the mouse invert not working which will make it incredibly difficult to play using the mouse for those of you who need it inverted like me. And you know, from the time that I've experimented with the mouse in the game, I think that mouse control is a very viable way to play this game. It may even be better than a gamepad for me, but it's not an option until they get that sorted. Several times I've had the mission start at the last stretch of the mission, so you'll fly for two or three seconds, the mission will end, and I got awarded three stars because, wow, I finished the mission in three seconds. Otherwise the game is enjoyable, it's quite adrenaline filled, especially when things get faster. It's nice in small bursts, it's a pick up and play, have a good time and then go do something else. I'm not sure I could sit with this for hours on end playing it over and over. I know some of you out there probably do. But again, the game is only $10, so if you do like this kind of experience, I don't really think you can go wrong here. There's not a lot to the game, it's pretty simple, it's what you see. You know, don't expect anything else. But outside of the complaints, there's not really that much else to say. I enjoy it but I enjoy Rebel Assault as well, for those of you who are old enough to remember that. It kind of reminds me of that. Kind of. It's not a bad game, but I do wish there was more musical variety and, you know, actual graphics options. Do I think it's worth picking up? Well, as I said before, it's only $10, so you can't really go wrong if you enjoy this kind of racing game. But it needs to be said, this is not an arcade flight sim, and it's not an arcade space shooter, just to be clear. The game is a score attack, time attack, reflex racer where you avoid obstacles and death traps. If you go in knowing what you're going to get, you're not going to be disappointed. If you expect any of the other things I just said, don't buy this game. But otherwise that sums up my impressions of The Collider 2. If you guys have any questions or comments you can leave them in the section below. If you've enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, well you know of course there's always the dislike button as well. Otherwise I've been Charling, until next time. So what is Warframe? Well, it's a free-to-play third-person action game with shooting, melee combat, space combat, crafting, upgrades, leveling and looting. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Trackmania series, it's basically a time-based arcade racing game. Now I want to start off by saying this, if you're looking for a driving simulation, you're going to have to look somewhere else.